Hi, everyone. Thank you for um, coming to today's session. We are delighted to introduce to you Mohan Rao, Senior Vice President of Samsung. Um, his uh, session today is Envisioning Tizen's Future, the OS of Everything. OK, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you had a great time in the morning with the breakout sessions, right? I mean, with the keynote sessions. And uh, this is the first breakout session where we are having the uh, we talk about the Tizen platform in the entire this breakout session. Okay, so before I start the today's talk, so let me give the how world has been evolving in the connecting uh, connectivity related space. As you know that the first uh, when first breakthrough happened through internet. First breakthrough happened with the internet, and <clears throat> with the internet being being there, lot of people started using this internet to get the information through personal computers in their homes. Later, the smartphones came up, and then they are not only providing the information through internet and trying to give the internet-based services in their hands. With the smart uh, smartphones getting evolved, many devices are becoming more and more uh, richer and richer in the uh, by connecting the internet and then and then becoming smarter and smarter however today we are in we are in the situation that there are as part of the as part of the keynote here you have seen that the around 21 billion connected devices will be there by 2020 so how these connected devices can talk to each other what kind of protocols and how what kind of content need to be shared and what is that the protocols that, that these, these devices are having to give that seamless user experience to the customers. So today we are in that particular journey. So <clears throat> we see that more smart devices came and then how, do, how, how they are connecting, connecting everything. And Tizen is in the better position and to make this particular vision as a reality. So let us see how this Tizen, how Tizen platform is making this particular reality to bring this vision uh, come true in future. So before getting into the Tizen, uh, how it connect the, how to make the easiness to these connected devices. So let me recap the what Tizen platform offers uh, at this moment. For the people who, do, who are hearing for the first time, this will benefit to understand the what is the Tizen and uh, how to, what kind of features it has. Tizen has been evolved from 2012. We made a humble start with the Tizen platform in 2012. And year on year, we have been adding various kinds of device profiles, be it smartphone profile, or it can be wearable profile, or it can be smart TV profiles. But in my opinion, the real power of Tizen, Tizen platform is yet to come. So we think that the, uh, with, the kind, with the kind of IO, Internet of Things era which is going on, the Tizen 3.0 is going to be uh, available later part of this year, which can expand into the IoT, uh, IoT era. So basically, Tizen is a, a completely open source project hosted by the Linux Foundation. It nicely integrates open source components and uh, also follow the open standards. And there are many open source components are available in this one. And uh, Tizen Association has been formed as an independent body, which is governed by the four key board members. And they made the very good and, uh, and uh, uh, futuristic roadmap for the Tizen platform to be available. Ecosystem. Ecosystem is very important for the platform to grow further. Tizen is having very strong and developed ecosystems. We might have seen a lot of uh, uh, applications are uh, getting developed for the Tizen-based smart TVs and Tizen-based devices and variables. So basically, ecosystem has the three important partners. One is about device manufacturers. For device manufacturers, it gives a lot of uh, flexibility in providing the, uh, to prepare various kinds of devices. Whereas for the operators, 
the telecom oper uh, operators, it gives a lot of customization fl flexibility to communicate their services into the into the uh, their customers. For the app developers, it gives portability so that once they develop the application, this application can be deployed into any kind of devices. For example, the uh, kind of uh, uh, engines that gaming engines and uh, kind of a remote test lab facility that is having it, it really makes very good usefulness for the application developers. So any, any platform which, which uh, will not have, uh, I mean, it will be incomplete if you don't have any products in the market. As you can see, the Gear S2 has been launched uh, in last year and with the circular UX has been very, very well appreciated by the consumers. It created very good positive feedback so that app developers like you can prepare the, your innovative thoughts and creative, uh, creative ideas into the applications for this particular uh, excellent product. At the same time, uh, Tizen has initial success with the smartphone devices in Indian market. We launched, Samsung launched two devices in Indian market and we got very good feedback from the Indian consumers. With that view, Samsung prepared very good roadmap for the Tizen based smartphone de devices in Indian market. All the Sam Samsung, you, ha you have seen the keynote that Samsung uh, TVs are based on the Tizen platform. It gives very uh, intuitive user experience to the Tizen TV consumers. There are many other devices powered by the Tizen operating systems, ranging from refrigerators, vacuum cleaners, and many other devices are going to be powered by the Tizen uh, operating systems. So how, wh how it is possible? I mean, how, why is vast variety of the devices, what is that it, Tizen platform has to keep track of the various kinds of devices? If you look at the architecture of the Tizen platform, there are certain components which are very common to the all device categories. They are all kept under the Tizen common. There are certain components are very important and it is for that particular device category. For those devices like the mobile devices, mobile, mobile profile will have the mobile related uh, components. For example, telephony is very important for the smartphone. So telephony components are available in the mobile profile. Whereas wearables, it is very important for the sensor frameworks. The sensor framework modules are available in the wearable, wearable profile. Whereas broadcasting technology components are very important for the TV. So those components are available in the TV. It's not just this device profiles. Certain components which are common to all these particular device categories, they are also available in the Tizen common, common kind of modules. This is how it gives a lot more flexibility for the various stakeholders to come up with the new device profiles or we can make it, break it down to the support for the various, various devices with the same components. So having, I hope you got the fair idea about the what Tizen platform offers and what is, what kind of features it has. Now let's, let us look into the what is coming in Tizen 3.0. As a, as a matter of fact, the Tizen 2.4 based devices are available. Tizen 2.4 is already available in the market. And Tizen 3.0 is planning, we are planning to uh, release the Tizen 3.0 later this year. So I want to give the, uh, what kind of new features and what kind of improvements are coming in Tizen 3.0. If you look at the, uh, before going to the features and improvements, if you look at the uh, Tizen 3.0 architecture, starting from the kernel, and it has the very uh, robust native components. And the, these native components are also having the native APIs. Any app developer who want to develop the performance centric applications, they can use these native APIs to develop the native applications. But certain app developers wanted to have the portability. So the, for those people, we have the latest web technology framework available for in this platform. So those people can use these web APIs and the various range of device APIs to develop the web-based applications. These applications are portable anywhere. For Tizen 3.0, all these modules are, have been uh, modified 
in order to make this platform is uh, is robust and uh, scalable for any kind of device categories including iod devices so first and foremost uh, let's talk about the kernel tizen always maintains the latest kernel available in the linux program so tizen 3.0 is having the latest Linux LTS kernel support. As you all know that li latest Linux LTS is guaranteed for the stability. So that the Tizen 3.0 employs this particular kernel. So while we are going through, there are so many SOC technologies that come up and then SOC technologies be, has been evolved to make the 64 bit is, uh, support is available for the various kinds of chipsets. So many new devices are going to utilize this 64-bit uh, architecture in, in, their, in their products. To cater this particular variety of the products and to cater various kinds of SOC technologies, Tizen 3.0 is, is improvised with the 64-bit support. So now coming to the display, <coughs> display drivers. As I, as I explained, Tizen is going to be is going to be supported for the various kinds of device categories. It can be miniature devices or it can be big LCD size devices like TVs. So in order to have the, uh, in our, this particular requirement came up to Tizen to support, to make it scalable and make it lightweight and have the high performance. So with that one, so we moved away from the X11 drivers to the Wayland in Tizen 3.0. This VLAND gives the very lightweight and also have the high performance and it has scalable to any kind of display sizes available in the market. Not just the display drivers, even we have to improve the graphics performance as well. So in order to improve the graphics performance, Tizen 3.0 is going to support the new generation graphics API called Vulkan. You have seen in the keynote how the Vulkan is going to perform. Uh, you got the glimpse of the Vulkan, how he is going to perform. In the, for, for example, for gaming applications. Vulkan basically gives the uh, generic API, the unified API to handle various kinds of uh, uh, devices. Be it the desktop or be it the mobile, you just need to have this common API, which is available, for, which is supported by the Vulkan. And at the same time, it will, uh, at the same time, this Vulkan API will give the lot more flexibility to the app developers to come up with the what kind of uh, SOC it has, whether I can I can do the multi-core programming, uh, all those such kind of facilities are available to the app developers. You can use those particular those particular APIs so. Uh, and come up with the very good, uh, excellent applications. And Tizen 3.0 supports the uh, UHD resolution natively. The earlier version, where if you have to use the UHD resolution, it is upscaled from FHD to UHD. By supporting UHD re resolution natively, we have to undergo the graphics engine uh, changes. While doing this particular job, we optimize the graphics engine in such a way that uh, we at least get the 30% performance improvement over the previous version like 2.4. And we <coughs> as I explained, the Tizen 3.0 is posted for the connected devices. There are various kinds of device categories are possible. But some of the device category requires the sh it, it requires the sharing opportunity. For example, the TV kind of device it is shared by the family in the home. But this gave the very good another requirement that each user, for example, the father may be having the some content, he may want to share some content with the family and he may want to hide some content, similar to the uh, mother and the kids. So this makes the uh, uh, requirement that we need to support the multi-user uh, support. Tizen 3.0 has this multi-user account support so that the, all the personalization of the each users can be maintained. 
in the single device. So, <coughs> so far we talked about the what are the features that are available for the for the end users and the customers. For the of course, app developers also you can utilize all these particular APIs available and then come up with the the your own creative thoughts. You convert those creative thoughts into the applications to better utilize the, these particular features. At the same time, uh, Tizen 3.0 is going to support the crosswalk uh, web platform because if you if you guys are thinking about how do I how do I make the portable applications, I, and I already have the crosswalk kind of knowledge, so you can once you develop the application using crosswalk, it is readily deployed for the Tizen platform. As you know that crosswalk is uh, having the latest web technologies and web runtime uh, platforms. And it is also having the standardized device APIs so that peop, uh, people who are well versed with the crosswalk kind of module, they can utilize uh, those applications, readily deploy for the Tizen uh, operating system. Security. As of now, the Tizen is going to, is having the very high security among all the platforms. So, <coughs> But at the same time, you, uh, when we have the security, there is a dif some difficulty to utilize the platform features all, as well for, as a developers. So Tizen 3.0 maintains this balance of the high security as well as the easiness to utilize these platform features. So Tizen 3.0 is going to support the Signora framework so that all the developers need to know about the Signora security rules. You don't need to worry about this, what kind of smack rules it is, you, you need to you need to pu, pu, have in the platform it's, uh, to utilize these platform features. Signora frameworks itself will generate the smack rules internally and then handles for the platform. You just need to know the Signora Signora security rules. At the same time, the Tizen 3.0 is going to support the antivirus framework so that. If you are uh, if you are having some thoughts about the antivirus solutions, you can develop using the this antivirus framework and come up with the antivirus applications. And also, third is the privacy control. The privacy control means that the, it keeps track of uh, the what kind of platform privileges has been taken by the applications, and it also handles the. Uh, uh, this gives the lot more flexibility to the cust uh, customer to choose what kind of, to know that what kind of privileges has been taken by these particular applications. They have the privilege to turn it off and on, these, these particular privileges. In Tizen 3.0, uh, user interface has been taken very good uh, steps and then we have improved a lot in the user interface. When it comes to the user interface, so we, we need to talk about the voice these days because the voice is becoming very prominent and to give that intuitive and easy experience for the customers. For voice control, uh, we have improvised by, handling, by having the natural language processing as well as the voice commands. But by simply having the, some voice command, any kind of platform or the device features can be utilized. All these APIs are available to the app developers so that you can use these APIs and come up with your innovative thoughts, innovative applications by, by having voice centric applications. And also the existing speech to text and text to speech engines are upgraded by having the multiple languages support. And as part of the Tizen 3.0, the multimedia framework also underwent a little, little more changes. So now we open the Face, face recognition and image recognition APIs for the app developers. You can use these APIs and, and come up with your innovative applications. And it's just not the smile detection, it is about various other emotion detection also is possible through, through these APIs. And also we have uh, improvised the flexible audio stream focus so that a music player application as well as the audio recorder can coexist and simultaneously work together. And Tizen 3.0 is also having the, the, especially for the map, map applications, tile based rendering is, is, is employed. With this one, we can make the map applications can be loaded much faster. And these APIs are available to the app developers so that you can use these APIs 
and then come up with uh, come, you can track the track the maps and the, mark the mark the maps and tile it and zoom it tap it all kind of functionalities available available in your own applications so most important module uh, which underwent in tizen 3.0 is the connectivity because the lot of changes has to be happen in the connectivity module to incorporate the to make it iot ready for this particular platform in tizen 3.0 bluetooth 4.2 core spec has been uh, supported there are two parts of the uh, 4.2 that is one is the internet protocol specific profile and bluetooth low energy uh, these two are very important to go for the iot devices and at the same time the connectivity framework has been upgraded to give the apis to the app developers in various profiles like phone book application uh, phone book access human interface device as well as the adp source and we have many usb dongles are available which has the internet access so if we just need to connect this usb dongle to the tizen based smart tv it can plug and play it can that whole tizen based smart tv can become hotspot and also it can get the content from the internet so this kind of flexibility has been added in the tizen 3.0 so so far we have seen that what are the new features are coming in tizen 3.0 and what kind of improvements of the existing uh, platform which has uh, how do, what kind of improvements are happened in tizen 3.0 but the real big thing is that how this tizen 3.0 is going to evolve as a connected device platform how it is going to be utilized what kind of changes have underwent in the in the in tizen 3.0 to make the connect everything if i talk about the connected devices the first thing which we need to talk about is the device convergence how these devices are going to be connected each other there are three features which are very important in the device convergence one is that how the two devices are pairing each other and the sharing the content among each other and second thing is that if i how can i launch the application in another device from my device and third is that how can i control the other device remotely from my device all these particular features has been added into the tizen 3.0 so that it is really the device convergence has been uh, has been uh, truly device convergence has been added in the tizen 3.0 and tizen 3.0 uh, is going to support the ocf the open connectivity foundations uh, iodvd platform the iodvd uh, is a kind of unique interface to cater to the to share the content with the various connected devices by abstracting various connectivity modules user need not have to developer need not have to know that which connectivity module it will go they just need to know the iodvd itself iodvd is the open source uh, available from the ocf and in addition to that tizen also come up with the tizen iot framework so it will further gives the unique interface for all tizen based devices so this means that all tizen 3.0 devices are iot ready so so that we, they can connect with each other and then share the content easily and then and then uh, all the device convergence related activities can be possible and samsung believes in end to end solution to make this iot products uh, prototyping so th for that they come up with the various kinds of uh, chipsets like artic artic 1 artic 5 artic 10 so <clears throat> to come up with, uh, i mean uh, for to make this particular iot dream as ready uh, reality so samsung believes that artic development platform is open uh, in the morning today and uh, artic cloud is also has been opened today so with the artic platform development platform and artic cloud and the tizen platform you can really make you add your own innovative services onto that and then make a product for, with that one it really gives the all the device manufacturers as a uh, faster time time to market with the iot devices so let me conclude about the various things that are uh, happening about the tizen uh, 3.0 as you, as i explained that uh, 
as you as you heard from the keynote also that by 2020 there will be 21 billion connected devices and also there is a projection that the 14.4 trillion dollar uh, by 2022 is, is the revenue this all opportunity exists for us how do we handle how do we take this opportunity further and how do we take this particular opportunity into the business model this is very important for us uh, to to utilize this particular opportunity that's why samsung draw a big picture about the iot and come up with the end to end solutions like arctic chipset arctic cloud smart devices smart things all are available to to gives the flexibility to the various kind of ecosystem partners you can use these you can use these particular platforms you can use these chipsets you can use these uh, uh, these services available and come up, add your own services and then make make it make it ready tizen is expanding its territory tizen is also is having lot of collaborations with various stakeholders in the ecosystem be it university partners or be it the uh, device manufacturers operators app developers many of them are collaborating each other and we are also coming up with the tizen based more devices are more devices are coming up and at the same time we had very good relationship with the developers so all these things that makes the tizen to territory uh, to increase expand like anything and make the the platform for the iot and samsung and tizen really believes that to realize this iot vision that it can be uh, by going forward 100% iot devices in next 5 years so this really makes the connecting everything uh, is possible uh, possibility uh, as a reality in next 5 years we are closely working with many ecosystem partners to make this vision as a reality and at the same time we are all here to work to need to work together to come up to grow this particular ecosystem and then bring this iot as a reality thank you and if you have any questions you can when can we expect sorry Tizen 3.0, uh, we, have, we have beta release plan in July and, uh, lay, and public release may happen in September this year. Sorry? Uh, what target these devices? Later, once the release is, uh, the platform is released happened, maybe the later point of time these devices may, can come up. Could you, <clears throat> could you please confirm that all this goodness you talked about, face recognition, voice recognition, is part of the open source uh, Tizen, as in anyone can take, say, an Exynos chip, build a device, download the sources, and have all that wonderful stuff without discovering that it has been contaminated with proprietary uh, contributions from some of the members? Uh Okay, yeah. as, as I explained, the Tizen 3. Point, Tizen itself is an open source platform, and the, all these APIs are available to all the app developers. And you can use these APIs and come up with the various kind of applications. So uh, Tizen, as uh, as I explained, that Tizen is maintains the latest Linux baseline. So Tizen 3.0 is is a big release, which is going to happen. And it, it employs the latest Linux LTS. All right. Thank you, Mohan, for this interesting presentation.